Hey everybody. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually make a, an appropriate neem oil emulsion. Um, there's a lot of videos where you see people using neem oil. I'm not saying it's not going to completely work, but you're losing out on the efficacy of neem oil if you don't properly emulsify it. Um, when you take like dish soap and you fill a bucket up with water and then you add your neem oil um, and then shake it up like you see in pretty much every pop gardening video. I mean that's just an inefficient way to do it. Um, a lot of people have issues with getting neem oil to work and it's actually really powerful and a really good tool. I don't use it all the time but uh, because of its anti-feedant properties and anti-reproductive properties, it's really good at getting getting rid of scale insects and uh, it can really cut into fast growing insects and disrupt spider mites and aphids. So I don't use it all the time in the garden um, on my orchids, but if I see something explode, I... Uh, um, I get ahead of it, you know, you can break into the, into the cycle. Um, and a, a really important thing is, is uh, it's not going to act right away. Uh, it's going to s slowly seep into the plant. It's going to seep into the insects. If you've emulsified and you're using a proper surfactant and it's going to slowly disrupt their ability to feed and their ability to molt. Um, so it's it's a powerful tool. It's been used in India for a long time and it's uh, I would say it's pretty indispensable. So here is the here's a really good way to emulsify your neem oil and it's super easy. It just takes a little more time. Um, three things you need. You need an emulsifier and a surfactant or a surfactant. Um, good emulsifiers to use. Um, I'm using uh, Cuyaha extract um, from build -A soil I just really like it. Uh, it has other additional anti-insect properties. Another good one would be uh, Dr. Bronner's soap. Um, I believe people typically use like one tablespoon to one teaspoon uh, per quart. Um, I'm going to be using one teaspoon per gallon rate, so a quarter teaspoon per about a thousand mils. Um, and the other thing you need is a good quality neem oil. Um, that's another reason why people don't get good results with neem oil, is they buy the cheapest stuff they can find online um, and a lot of a lot of neem oil uh, is often processed and stripped of the active components to be used in other agricultural products or uh, it's stripped of things uh, because neem oil is used in a lot of cosmetics and stuff in Asia um, so you want to make sure you're getting the real deal I know build soil has good stuff um, you just want to find a good whole cold pressed neem oil. Um, I know Dynagro has a neem oil that's okay, I've used it. Um, but the one of the big reasons why people will burn their plants with neem oil, people won't get as good of control, is because if the oil, the neem oil is not dispersed in your solution as an emulsion, it won't evenly coat the plant. It won't absorb into the plant as as well because the oil and water are basically separated. And so what you end up with is a bunch of greasy looking shiny leaves and you know you can clog your stomata easier. You can have issues with um, burning um, and there's some other considerations I'll go over but I just want to go over the simple process 
So all you need is your oil, you need an emulsifier or a surfactant. Uh, going back to what I said, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, any Castile Soap. I don't recommend using Dawn, which you see a lot of people using. I'm not saying it's terrible, um, but if you look in the ingredients, surfactant is sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate. And um, not only are you going to be adding uh, salt and sodium to essentially a foliar spray, um, these surfactants in here are um, ionic. And this is still this is a similar consideration for Dr. Bronner's. But if you are going to use this as a surfactant, you really need to use pure water or soft water with very low total dissolved solids and very low carbonate hardness. Because I don't know if you've ever mixed these soaps up with hard water, you'll notice they get cloudy because these are ionic surfactants and they'll precipitate out. Uh, saponins are non-ionic surfactants. Another good widely available non-ionic surfactant um, that will just work uh, kind of as a workhorse is polysorbate 20, tween 20. You can buy food grade uh, polysorbate 20 very easily online and that works really good as a surfactant. So here's the method. So like I said I'm going to add about one teaspoon of this saponin per gallon which I'm going to be using about a quarter teaspoon per 1,000 mils. I'm going to put this in here and the rate to that this neem oil is applied at is about one tablespoon per gallon so that's 15 mils. Um, I would apply about four mils per gallon, a little under five mils or a little under a teaspoon to this spray to get the same rate per gallon. Um, and neem oil should be stinky. It should smell like, kind of like peanut butter uh, with a uh, interesting smell to it. Uh, that's how you know that there's a lot of actives. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix this neem oil with our surfactant in here. And then we're going to slowly agitate it. Once you want to make sure that all of the um, surfactant, it's actually easier with liquid surfactants in some cases because you got to wait for this kind of to soak in. Um, but if you had like a uh, liquid soap that has a little bit of water in it already, um, it's pretty easy to combine in this first step. And so all you do, I'm just getting this all mixed up in here. Um, this wouldn't be a liquid if it didn't have a little bit of water in it. Um, it would be more solid. Um, so there should be enough to start dissolving the saponin and dispersing it. And uh, you can see, now that I got it mixed up a little bit, I'm just going to add a splash of water. And I'm going to agitate it significantly just to keep everything mixing up. And we're basically making the opposite of a salad dressing. So we're making an emulsion, but a salad dressing is maybe a small amount of vinegar, a uh, egg yolk or mustard as an emulsifier, and then you slowly add uh, oil in to make a water in oil emulsion. Because the amount of oil and surfactant or the amount of oil that we're adding in is only a little less than a, a teaspoon. Um, we're making water and oil 
surfactant. This time. And you can see, if you can look in there, it's not separating out as at all. It's not, there's not an oil layer at the top that you have to keep shaking in. It's cloudy. And that's because there is an emulsion starting to be made. And uh, once you get through this first part, it goes pretty quick. So I'm just adding a little at a time. And it looks like all the surfactant is dissolved in the bottom. It's very cloudy. And uh, you can just slowly start adding water in at this point. Just keep mixing it. Oops. Gotta go wipe that up. And now, you can see, I'll, I'll pour a shot glass out. You can see that this forms a stable emulsion. And we now have a super effective foliar spray. So let me get a shot glass. And you can see that there's not a separating oil layer and it's cloudy. Um, this is what you call a stable emulsion. So all of the oil that, all the neem oil that we added is in a stable, relatively stable suspension. Don't leave this sitting around for multiple days. You want to use, use it within 24 hours. Um, because the oils can coalesce um, some surfactants better than others um, but that's the main thing y you know all these videos talking about making neem oil sprays you shouldn't have to keep shaking the neem oil back into solution with soap um, and that's just from a slightly different technique um, so keep in mind the three components are an emulsifier and a surfactant your neem oil and soft water um, and if you have soft pure water with low carbonate hardness you can use a much wider range of surfactants uh, keep in mind different surfactants are going to have different uh, effects on plants some are more phytotoxic than others a big thing is that you don't want to apply these sprays in the sun. Um, it's just gonna stress the hell out of your plants. Um, apply the sprays in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, or on a cloudy day. But if the leaf temperatures raise above about 75, 80 degrees with some of the surfactants and emulsion, emulsifiers, uh, it can cause phytotoxicity especially so if you use a uh, sodium containing surfactant like dish soap um, you're just going to add extra stress because there's salt on the leaves if you didn't use soft water or low tds water um, you're going to have you're just going to amplify that so just be careful about when you apply it then that's all you got to do um, so give, give a properly emulsified neem oil a try. I mean, it, 
there's just a lot of bad or low quality information about making these preparations and neem oil is a really good organic solution to some pest problems. It's not a panacea, but um, it's really effective. I'm going to use this solution on uh, some scale that I found on my plumeria.